using the detector, George found lots of metal things. <laughs> but none of them was Yorbo. Oh, the batteries are dead. I'll have to recharge them, but I'll bring this back tomorrow in case you're still looking. Bye now. Thank you. George couldn't wait for tomorrow. He had to find Yorbo before he rusted. That's probably Professor Wiseman. Maybe she can think of something. Hey, guys. Hi. I heard there was a storm, so I thought I'd check in. Hi. Oh, what's wrong? Well, George can't find his robot. It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Is it made of metal? Uh-huh. You could try using a metal detector. We borrowed one, but it ran out of batteries. Well, metal detectors are easy to make. Huh? Sure. First, grab the portable radio from the shelf. OK. AM, FM radio, check. Next, find the calculator. A bottom drawer on the desk. <laughs> Then get some tape, a top drawer on the desk. <laughs> now take the radio and switch it to AM. Okay. Then turn the knob all the way to the highest radio station number, but make sure you get static and not an actual station. Turn up the volume, then turn on the calculator and tape it to the radio. Fantastic. You see, the radio and calculator act as a magnet. When it finds things that would stick to a magnet, the radio beeps. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't believe you knew that. Well, how do you think I won first place in my second grade science fair? George was confused. He had already searched half the beach. But which half? If only the beach were smaller. Then, George remembered tic-tac-toe. He could break up the beach into smaller sections, like a tic-tac-toe board. If George could mark off the squares he searched, then he'd know where he'd looked and where he needed to look. Ah. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> You want to make a grid to help you keep track of your search? <laughs> oh, great idea, George. All set. Let me know if you need anything. <laughs> if George searched every square, then he'd be sure to find your boat. <laughs> In square number four, George found a trumpet. In square six, George found a front grill to a 57 Cadillac. But by square number eight, there was still no sign of Yorbo. No luck, huh? Yorbo had to be in this last square. He had to. I can get back to the thrilling conclusion of my book. Oh well. Wait for me! <laughs> now for the test. It worked. 
And George figured if it worked for blueberries, it should also work for coconut. George's creation worked like a vending machine, but it didn't look like one. Not yet. As the saying goes, one person's refrigerator box is another monkey's vending machine. George finished his machine by making a serving slot for the bowls. Everything looked great. But who would turn the wheels? Even after a great Peschetti meal, the two groups were still poles apart. We've got to get both groups to relax and mingle. Maybe the after-dinner entertainment will help? Oops. I, uh, I forgot all about that. Sorry. <laughs> right. Dessert. Yes, George, we're ready. <laughs> <clears throat> May I have everyone's attention, please? I want to thank Professor Chilla de Winter and Professor Dewey Friesum. I represent the North Pole, of course. The one on top of the world. <laughs> it all depends on how you hold the map. Yes, um, well, thank you for joining us tonight. And may I just say, what is that? <gasps> is that a vending machine? <laughs> <laughs> wow. George's special dessert started with a special coin. Gnocchi's love of toys was exactly what the Giorgio Matic needed. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's oh, amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, why, this is snow on a mountain. My mommy used to make that. What do you mean you forgot the entertainment? This is perfect. Like the Arctic in here. I'd say more like the Antarctic. Oh, frostbite and icicles. Snow is snow, right? Right. Put her there. Happy to. Well, George, thanks to you, Operation Snow Go is go going. Uh, George? <laughs> As for George, he was busy perfecting his plans for the next George Omatic. I'm afraid you'll have to wait till next year. I got them all shorn at the fair. Oh. Hmm. 
Maybe some other animal grew hair that George could turn into yarn. But Leslie's hair was much too short. The pigs had hardly any hair. The chickens have feathers instead of hair. Oh, don't worry, George. Hey, maybe there's a pilot with a plane who can fly us over the whole country so we can look around for a sheep with hair. Uh. Allie, Mr. Rankins, come to the house. Cousin Ida's on the phone. I'll be right back, George. And I'll bring my bike so we can start looking for pilots. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. George figured he'd pass the time watching the sheep eat grass. A lot of grass. No, a sheep was escaping. <laughs> Bo didn't seem to understand, monkey. <laughs> but he did understand this. Now, what was the whistle for help runaway sheep? George didn't know, so he guessed. Wrong guess. Now George wondered how to whistle, come back. Another wrong guess. George was suddenly wishing he'd paid more attention at the sheepdog competition. whistle he could think of to get Bo to turn the sheep around. None of them was right. <sighs> Been a slow day today. You were saying? Never mind. The sheep ended up at George's house. Hi, George. Anything interesting happen while I was gone? Um, uh... Oh, no. George? Don't worry, Mr. Rankins. Yes, we have your sheep, and they're all safe. George, could you get those sheep away from the tuba? Go on, go on. Boy, am I grateful. That storm blew a bunch of trees down in the pasture. If George hadn't found shelter for the sheep, they might have gotten hurt. Hey, you hear that, George? You're a hero, monkey. <laughs> we went to a friend's to get a thank you gift. Allie knew just what you wanted. Whoa! And lots of it. We can dye it any color you want. <laughs> I'll teach you how to knit. You'll have a new scarf in no time. <laughs> and that was how George not only made a new scarf for himself, but also one for the man with the yellow hat. Scarf. And I think you picked the right color. <laughs> Safe at home. Now that George was a numbers pro, he was having a great time keeping score, watching the game, <laughs> and rooting for Marco to hit a home run. Here's the pitch. Looks yeah. like it could get out of here. It's going, going. <laughs> People. My mom's on the phone and I have to talk to her. I wish there was someone who could help you, but there isn't. 
Really? You can help? Uh-huh. Awesome! But, but first I have to see if you're qualified. Oh. It fits! You got the job. Good news, people! This very nice monkey is taking my place. <laughs> I just served customer number seven, so eight is next. Hey, Mom, what's up? <laughs> After seven comes eight, then nine, then ten. This was going to be easy. George had no idea what number came after that. Um, uh, hmm. Excuse me, I'm number 16. I should get my drink before 17 gets his pretzel. Huh. Hold on, you can't serve 16 before you serve 14. Huh. What about 13, monkey? Uh, 12 comes before 13. Uh, 11 is next. Calm down, people. What's the problem? Uh, he's serving us out of order. Seriously? Do you know your numbers? Cool. So what comes after 10? <laughs> well, I'll show you. It's easy. Just cover the first part of the number with your hand and look at the second part. See? One, two. So 11, then 12. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Do you want me to take over? <laughs> As fun as it was to hand out popcorn, George was eager to get back to the game. Hey, kid, where you been? Um. Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> Thanks, kid. Let's go! This is it, folks. After two scoreless innings, it's the Cubby Bear's last chance to break the tie. Wish me luck, George. Ha ha! <laughs> Here I quad. <laughs> Here I two. Uh, just a reminder, folks. Three strikes and you're out. Run! I did it! I hit a home run! Oh. Oops! Run, George, run! <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. And third base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! We're so proud. That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid. Kid? There he is. Citizens of Prairieville, welcome to the ceremony for the joining of the rails. To drive in the last pin, Sheriff Doorman. Oh, huh? What? Oh dear, I've lost the pin. Oh. Here he is. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <gasps> oh no! Oh. Huh? This was oh, awful. No. Hundley had to find that pin. Need a hand, partner? We feel just awful 
about losing the pin. Uh, 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 Deputy thought she might be right. There was too much sand. Then the stranger realized all they needed was a sifter. Something with holes that would let the dirt out but keep the pin in. Oh! <laughs> Who's hungry? <laughs> After all, what's a western without a ooh 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 ooh? The spaghetti. <laughs> Perfect. A really big sifter. <laughs> the deputy hoped the holy bowl would save the day. Only it didn't. The holes were too big to keep the small pin inside. Any luck finding the pin? <laughs> Last piece of pie. Sure you don't want some? Suddenly, the stranger knew what to do. If he wanted a sifter with holes the right size, huh? he'd have to make it himself. Luckily, he knew how big the holes needed to be. This was bigger than the pin from the box. If the stranger used it to make holes, the pin would fall through them. But this was a perfect size nail. It would make a hole that would let the dirt out, but keep the pin in. all set up. Ah! Aw, and you saved the last pin for me. Cool. <laughs> Hundley was happy the train was back on track. This is great, and I've got the perfect name for it. Hundleyville. What do you think of that, Hunley? Uh, Hunley? Prairieville was neat and clean, had the best sheriff you've ever seen. His deputy was on the ball.